The Nokia 5110. Forget mobile phone trends of today. This was the single most desirable phone in Romania in the early 2000s, period. It's nothing special at first glance, but you could see that a generation and a nation hungry for mobile tech really took to this one. But we, before we get on any further, I think it's time to take a little piece of cloth and some um, window detergent product placement. No, I'm just kidding. I don't get sponsors. So let's try to clean this up a bit and see what we're dealing with. So it has been, this thing was a bit grimy. It hasn't been used for quite some time and it just stood in the in a box as a remembrance uh, in a hope that someday the owner will be able to put it to fully, you know, fully factory functioning spe specifications. So anyway, the design itself, it's a pretty bulky thing. When the Nokia 5110 came out, there were smaller phones out there. Uh, one that springs to mind is the, the Ericsson, I was going to say Sony Ericsson, the Ericsson T10 and the Motorola StarTac that came way earlier than this one. This was a bit of a break of a phone, but these rounded out shapes and these, I don't know what to call them, bio-design, uh, jelly bean looking buttons and this atypical asymmetrical look for the front, uh, front uh, of the device. They really made it stand apart and really hide the fact that it was quite big. So uh, it's quite a bulky looking thing as you can see I'm holding it like a brick it was sometimes called that um, but it did have some redeeming features this is the era where no when Nokia still used the the external antenna this is the power button and this is how you release the battery but I guess we can switch to a tabletop view so we can talk further about the design details and how this thing fares up. First thing you can notice before we turn it on, it has this rather interesting setup for the front, uh, the fascia of the phone. This, uh, this whole piece of bezel actually comes out. Let me try to nudge it open so you have this sort of lever here you need to press it with your fingernail hopefully I will not break mine there we go and just easily pry it open and you can see the f the innards of the phone while well, at least the keyboard and the display exposed to you now this is looking in a rather nice condition so even if the front end has suffered a bit from scratches and the odd hits. I think the phone itself looks excellent. It's, it's in excellent condition. So if you plan on placing some funky, I remember yellow, red, and sort of a more bluish color for the Express On cover, but anyway, there were aftermarket options as well as OEM Nokia options out there. Um, Here's the battery. Um, this one is the, I believe, original nickel cadmium sort of battery, but let's zoom in and see what we have here. The back of the phone, I will expose the label here so you can read some of the things that were a placed here also made in Germany so yeah that's about it let's zoom out and check out the rest of the phone now here you have a classic mini sim tray and I shall go and fetch one sim so we can start this thing up I have here a testing a test sim tray let me just try to 
figure out how to place this thing into the phone. So there's sort of a drawer, um, what would you call this? There's sort of a sliding open mechanism to the SIM tray itself. So it, you glide it in like so and then secure this uh, piece of plastic uh, trim or rather mechanism in place and just clip it back in. And now the SIM tray is secure. This was a huge deal back in the early and mid 2000s. I remember lesser mobile phone companies having issues with moving SIM cards and losing signals and whatnot. Nokia rarely, if any, had this issue. So yeah, that's finished quality for you. So let's clip it back into place. There's also this feeling of qual general quality and well-built, overly engineered um, situation going on with this uh, this phone and this generation of Nokia phones up until I believe 2006 or 2008 everything was built to last, built to outlast even its own uh, tech cycle. So if this phone was meant uh, for you to use it two years or three years this would I believe uh, function well over six or eight years. And here's the proof as I shall now turn it on. So it's gonna take some time to power up but it should get there pretty soon. Okay so pen number is just a trial quadruple zero effect. Now this is the Navi key. This functioned as an okay, a call answer and a Really, it had uh, various uh, functions uh, for the phone menu. Now, a big issue with this phone was actually the battery. Even though it was very reliable, it took ages to charge up, somewhere around four to six hours. And after that, it was advisable that you do not charge it uh, when it's not actually empty as this would damage uh, and reduce its life uh, span. Yeah, so that was mobile tech way back in 2000s. Yeah, it would hold battery for about, I don't know, one week if you were very frugal or maybe three to four days if you played around. Speaking of which, let me get into the games menu and show you the staple legendary a snake game. Here's snake and I don't know if I can remember to play. Yeah, so this is the type of snake that didn't go through walls. You just had to, um, well you just had to uh, maneuver your way like so. Yeah, between the, you know, inside the game so you could uh, whatever, eat the, catch the reward and yeah, well, you all know snake, it's not something I need to explain to you. The C button acts as a cancel and a back variant. Now let's listen to some interesting tunes just for the sake of nostalgia. Anyway, here we go, I changed the menu setting, the menu language to English, so let's listen to some tunes. And my personal favorite. <laughs> I can't get enough of this. It's just nostalgia. When I was little, my brother, my older brother had this um, Nokia 5110. I was only, I don't know, 14 years old and he was 22. <laughs> Naturally, I didn't have a mobile phone back then. Uh, I was about to receive one as a gift from him in um, a few months time but I was still infatuated with this ringtone. Yeah, that's the one. Uh, 
and of course the classic Nokia tune. So that has been the general presentation and uh, well nostalgia driven review of the Nokia 5110. One of the most important phones, mobile phones of all time and certainly the most important of my generation. Um, other thoughts on it, well it was really skimpy and frugal on uh, options and features even though some other phones from this time offered the maybe infrared or radio, this thing had nothing of the sort. I believe you could only um, pre-install, uh, introduce some Nokia tunes and create them by pressing a combination of keys of some sort. So yeah, but it wasn't supposed to be a top tier player. This was the mid, upper mid level of offering from Nokia. There was the entry 2000 series and 3000 series, the 3110 of which I have no, I have not seen one in quite some time, but I have seen a 6110 which will be reviewed further on in this, on this channel. So the Nokia 5110 wasn't huge on, uh, on options and features, but then again it wasn't supposed to be. It did what it was designed to do and mainly offer uh, affordable and exquisite uh, quality mobility to the masses. It defined a generation, at least in my country. So should you collect one? Well, obviously the answer is yes. They hold their value pretty good though they're not expensive. A good one should be around 30 to 50 euros but that includes uh, you know a proper original package and charger and whatnot, a functioning battery and an overall okay aesthetic shape. This one is looking it's looking okay, it's not really beat up, but it doesn't have any accessories or uh, any other uh, things going for it. So I guess that's been it for me today. Thanks for watching and remember, I buy, hoard, collect and sometimes borrow quirky obsolete tech stuff like this one so you don't have to. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.